Hey guys, Aspen Wolf here. Wow, like I'm like pale <laughs> because this white wall. Uh, so yes, as the title says, this is an improved sunbeam care guide. Uh, so I'm just gonna let him crawl around on me. And as you see, my little skeleton helper has a list. And I wrote down some stuff I want to go over. And if there's some information in this video that is not like in the video or you need more explaining to, I just like hit him in the face, I'm sorry. Uh, you need more explaining to, don't be afraid to comment. I will answer. I will try to keep an eye out on the comment section. It doesn't ever notify me when there's a comment. So I'll just try to remember to every once in a while come and check on the comments. And also I have another uh, video. It's it kind of has loud background noise, that's why I'm doing this inside this time, because the last time I did it outside, and it was super loud. Uh, so go and check that video out too, and see if I explain anything more, or uh, just give more detail that I didn't give this time. <clears throat> so yes, he's probably going to be half in, half out of my shirt the whole time, because one thing I want to go over is... Uh, light. <laughs> so I gotta make sure he doesn't crawl into the couch because I will never get him out because they are super super strong species as you will hear later. So I have organized this into everything. So um, <clears throat> I will try to list everything and where the times are right here or over my skeleton's face, wherever. But I will tell you right now, okay dude, like I'm scared he's gonna go on the couch and that is not good for anybody. Uh, so uh, the things I'm going to go over are just little facts and tips and everything. Um, and then I'm gonna go over attitudes and availability and you know everything you need for really choosing a sunbeam, like which one you want. And um, then I'm going to go over how I set up his husbandry and care for him and I'm going to show you every product that I use and also how to set up a temporary house because right now I have to keep him in a temporary house because he actually has a respiratory infection and he did not get it in my care. He had it before I got him but I just thought it was normal for him to wheeze a little bit because there was no discharge and he would only wheeze like once every like hour or so. So, you know, he never wheezed a lot so I was like, oh, maybe it's just because their head shapes are weird. But then it started to get more frequent so I took him to the vet and the vet is now having me give him injections. Uh, so, hello. <laughs> Sorry, he's like looping back around me. I know, he does not like to be on camera at all. Uh, so, <laughs> dude, the people want to see you. <laughs> okay, so you can't see him and um, he's content wrapped around me like a belt, so <laughs> I'll get him out. Okay, um, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah, these snakes do not like uh, light and you know they just like to be wrapped around stuff so yeah I'll let him wrap around my neck and he's going down my back <laughs> so anyway uh, I will try to keep him in frame this time because last video he also crawled away into my shirt and then into my pocket so first off the tips and sorry if I look at this every once in a while because this is kind of telling me everything so I'm actually going to set it over there so that I can just peek down and see it. So I'm sorry for this long intro, but I just wanted to give you some information about what this video is going to be about and about my last video and everything. So um, first off, uh, don't take out in the light or day uh, for extended periods because they do not like it. They have uh, sensitive eyes because they're a burrowing species so they're meant to see in the dark so when they're in the light it kind of hurts their eyes a little bit. Uh, right now since I have a kind of dim light I have my camera's uh, thing set up to where it looks really bright but it's actually not that bright in here. 
uh, he's fine, but I only take him outside during the day. Only after he sheds for uh, about five minutes to get some videos of his colors. You know, because after they shed, their colors are so vibrant and beautiful that it's like, oh my god, I want to take you outside and, you know, see your colors. Other than that, I don't take him outside during the day. On weekends, I'll get him out and um, take him outside, walk around at night. And, of course, he's a very curious little thing, so he likes to, you know, hang off my shoulders and arms and sniff the air. And, yeah, he's just adorable when I take him outside. Um, another thing is, uh, they don't like heat. I know that sounds weird, you're like, they're a reptile, they're cold-blooded, how do they not like heat? Well, uh, they don't like high heat, should I say? Because, you know, other snakes that you get, they're like, oh, the cool end should be between 75 and 80, and the hot end between 85 and 90. Well, they don't like that. Uh, they like their highest heat to be 80 degrees. And uh, my room, the snake room, because this is what this is, and that's probably why there's an echo, because there's nothing in here but this couch and the snakes, so yeah. Uh, I actually have it heated, so the ambient room temperature is about 85 in here, so that keeps his enclosure perfectly warm and the perfect gradient because as he goes into the substrate it gets cooler and as he goes above substrate it gets hotter. So it makes the perfect gradient so I don't even have a heat mat or heat lamp or anything on his enclosure. So obviously if you can't get a room at like 85, 90 degrees then obviously you need a heat mat. I used to have a heat mat for him before I got the heater in this room and uh, he did just fine, he, you know, it never bothered him or anything. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, a, another thing that I want to go over is, uh, sorry, like, I really don't remember any of the information that I want to go over. I'm, like, super sorry. Is, um, they don't get scale rot. Okay, so I'm telling you this because if they don't have proper humidities, they will die. So, yeah, and their proper humidities, sorry, uh, should be between 80% and 100%. Mine right now in his actual enclosure is at 99%, and in his temporary, like, uh, hide thing, like, enclosure, I don't know what it's at, but it's kind of humid in there because like uh, whenever I take his hide out to uncover him it's like dripping with water so I know it's pretty humid in there uh, so they don't get scale rot but if you start to see kind of like blisters that look like scale rot it's from stress so um, when I got him from the expo he, his stomach was like half orange, he had so many blisters on him from stress. And I didn't know what they were, because obviously I couldn't find a lot of care, like sheets and everything about sunbeams. Uh, so, when I got him home, I put him in his regular enclosure, because you know, I don't fiddle with the whole temporary hide and enclosure and all that. You know, I just put him directly in his enclosure. And I didn't mess with him for about a week. And after I got him out to try and feed him, uh, the blisters were completely gone. He was back to perfect health, well, except for his infection. But, you know, like, all the blisters were gone, and he's never got them back since. So if you start to see those blisters pop up on your sunbeam, I'm sorry, there's like a dude mowing right next to my house. <laughs> Uh, if you start to see those blisters on your sunbeam, just stop messing with them. Just leave them alone for, you know, a, like a week or two. And also, if it doesn't go away after you're not messing with them or anything, uh, try to, like, see if your husband tree is bad or dirty or, you know, just check because, you know, it could be anything in their enclosure stressing them out. Uh, so, 
Also, one last tip that I have is feed them in a separate enclosure. Yes, I know there are risks with that, like regurgitation, you know, getting bit and all that, but I, f I used to feed him in his enclosure, but they are constrictors, I figured that out. Uh, so, obviously he wraps around his food, and he drags his food around a lot, like, you know, like drags it and like wiggles it around like that. So it would get covered in dirt and then he would like slam it down into the dirt and start eating it. So he would get a lot of substrate in his mouth. And when I took him to the vet to get his uh, respiratory infection checked out, the vet was pulling globs of substrate out of his mouth. And of course that can be a cause for respiratory infection or irritation. And also they can get impacted and you know, sometimes you have to get surgery to get that impaction out. So my tip and recommendation is to feed him in a separate enclosure. I was going to grab his box that I feed him in because I just got a giant Amazon box and taped up all the holes so that you know, he couldn't possibly get out. And I feed him in there and I feed him like two feet away from his enclosure so that I'm not having to carry him far. And also I support most of his body when I'm taking him out so that, you know, he doesn't regurgitate or anything. And also when you feed them in there, after they swallow the mice, let them sit for about three to five minutes just to kind of let it settle and not like think, oh, I'm in danger, i uh, regurgitate, right? So yes, so that is the last little thing of my tips. So now I will go into attitude. So there are many different attitudes with these snakes, but there are three kind of categories that I can separate them all into. And, <laughs> sorry. And that is social, skittish, and uh, just, you know, they're, they're constantly like moving, like wanting to get away from you. So, of course, saying that at every expo you go to, if you're debating on getting a sunbeam, hold all of the ones that are there before you choose. Because when I was going to choose out Prism, um, I held about five other sunbeams and some of them were very like runners, as I'll call them. So that meant they never stopped moving and they just wanted to get away from you and you had to like sit there like this trying to, <laughs> he sneezed, okay. <laughs> trying to keep them in, you, you know, like at you and not like crawling away. So of course, you know, if you're fine with a snake that does that, that's constantly moving and you know, you're always having to like keep a hold of it, you know, then great. But personally, I like kind of docile social snakes. So that's why I loved him when I found him. Uh, and then the second one is the skittish ones. So some of them I would touch and they wouldn't like try to run. They were like, okay with being like handled, you know, they weren't runners, but every time you touch them, they would like tense and like jump away from you, you know? And of course, you know, that just means they're not trusting of you and it's going to need a lot of work to get them to trust you so you can handle them. So if you're fine working with snakes that long, which I am, but you know, I found him and I was like, oh, he's perfectly social and nice and not skittish and not a runner. I'll get him, you know, but if I had to, I would have got one of the skittish ones and I would have kept working with it and it eventually, you know, would have got used to me. And then, of course, on to the last attitude of him. Very nice and social, like he doesn't mind being held, it's just the light is bothering him. But as you see, he's calmed down now and his tail is just kind of hanging out down here. Uh, he's calmed down now and he loves to be held. He'll crawl over to like everyone and, you know, stick his little head out, you know, like that and just kind of stick it up and around, you know. He's a very, very social, curious little thing and I think it's so adorable and, you know, it's also good because then, you know, if I ever need someone else to hold him, he's not like, new person, new person, oh my god, oh my god, 
like right and trying to get away from them and the person who's holding them if they're not used to snakes is like oh my god you know so yeah uh so those are the three attitudes and um a, a thing to go along with attitudes is most are imports by the way so that's why some of them were skittish and like runners and everything because they are imports because I don't know why but people don't breed these guys in captivity they're very easy to breed but <laughs> people just don't do it um so yeah and then um there was something else I wanted to talk about with attitudes, but I can't remember. Oh yeah, the expo thing. I recommend only buying at an expo when you can go and hold all of them and find out like which one you like. But if you happen to find one online and you're fine with all the attitudes I told you, of either you'll get a really social one, which is kind of, you know, rare or uncommon, or you'll get one that's kind of like a runner, you know, doesn't like to sit still. Or one that is, you know, very skittish, will tense all the time and jump away from you. If you're fine with any one of those things, because obviously the snake will eventually get used to you and probably become social, then go ahead and buy offline, you know? But I do recommend going to an expo and buying from there. Um, anything else I want to hide? Um... No, okay, so now my last thing is his husbandry, which I'm going to show you everything I use, and yeah. <clears throat> so, I will actually show you me putting him away, so I'm just going to stand up and grab the camera. Uh, so I gotta like flip this around, okay. Okay, so come over here. And this is the tub I'm keeping him in now because, like I said, without proper humidities, they will die. So this is a uh, sphagnum moss. I just bought it off Amazon for reptiles. Obviously, it is wet. Sorry, I'm trying to, like, hold the camera. Uh, so obviously, it is wet, and you can see it kind of clumps together because it's wet, and my fingers are wet. You probably can't see that. But yeah, and then I have this hide over here and it's like really big like yeah uh so with this sorry like i cannot hold you while holding him <laughs> so with this um i just kind of centralize all the moss into here and he'll curl up and all that and be covered by it and i just cover it with that to hold in humidity and make it dark and then if I can get him to go down in there. Hi. Yeah, you want to go home? The entrance is over there. Over there. Over there. Okay, well, he's crawling around. So that is his temporary tub, sorry it's like out of focus, but yes, and see he's like crawling around there, he'll find his way to the entrance. And then you can like close this up, obviously this one is a special closed lid, so I actually have to lift these up and close it like that. And that keeps him from getting out, but as a preventative measure, I have this bag of cypress mulch. And I'll just lay it on top, like that, so that he can't really push it out. Yeah, I don't know why this thing's so out of focus. There you go, but that's what I put on top. Um, sorry if this part of it is like horrible. I'm like trying. <laughs> um, so, sorry, I was moving his thing because my stool's right here, <laughs> right there. So, yes, uh, I will show you his tub now, where I generally keep him when he's not in his temporary hide. 
So yes, uh, also that is how you will want to set up a temporary hide because, you know, low humidity equals death. <laughs> so yeah, um, so his tub is right here. As you see, I have nothing in there but a water bowl and substrate because they, like I said, are a burrowing species. They will not climb. That hide that is in there used to be in here, but it was very, very annoying to take out all the time because every time I tried to pick it up, dirt would fall in his water bowl and he would never use the hide anyways. He always stayed buried down in the substrate. And as you see, there is a window right next to his tub, which I generally try to keep these curtains closed to make it darker in here than, you know, like the rest of my terrariums and tubs. And the water bowl, uh, you don't need one as big as mine, but I got one big enough for him to soak in, and it is by Exoterra. And I made sure to get a heavy one because he is so strong and heavy that I was scared he would knock any others over. Sorry, I just heard like noise in the hallway. So I was scared he would knock any others over. So that one is very heavy. It's probably about like three to five pounds. Uh, if not more, I've never weighed it, but based on holding it, it's probably about three to five pounds, if not about seven when it's full of water. <laughs> so that's all I have in there, and this is like peak perfect uh, setup for them. So yeah, and as you see, that is my hydrometer right there. You can't read it, but it does say 99% on it. And as you see, there is like water all down in here. So, and uh, the holes. So I actually have that fan going, but it's backwards just to kind of circulate air a little bit. And I have about these, uh, about five to six holes on each side of his tub. Only at the top though, just so it circulates air, but doesn't dry out his humidity down here. So yeah, so I will show you one of my other snake enclosures. And as you see, this one, it's so bright. Okay, it has holes like everywhere. I had to tape up some just because the humidity was drying out so bad. But as you see, there are holes everywhere in here because they need a kind of lower humidity than him. So yeah. And now, uh, sorry if you can't see me, I didn't feel like turning around that thingy. So now with the bedding, um, I'm trying to flatten it out. I'm sorry. Oh, I just spewed like jungle mix everywhere. So this is what I use if it'll focus. Sorry, I'm trying to get it to focus. Okay, so I'll just pull you a little closer. So I use the Zilla Jungle Mix with fur and sphagnum peat moss. And see, that's what it's for, and that's all the stuff in it. And I got the 24 quart bag. As you see, I didn't use all of it, but that's like barely any left in that bag. So yeah. And as you see, like I spewed it all over my floor. <laughs> so hopefully this was okay. Um, let me grab that paper and see if there was anything else I wanted to go over. Oh yes, okay. Uh, so feeding. Uh, I already told you to feed him in a separate enclosure. And uh, another thing I wanna tell you about that is their jaws do not unhinge as much as other snakes. So you can't feed them like one big meal. Like my sunbeam, if he was like a regular uh, snake, he would be eating about rats, you know, like uh, small rats at this point, but he will not be able to get them down. <laughs> so <laughs> I feed him adult mice and I feed him two every week because with them, since they can't, you know, unhinge their jaw as much, multiple is better. So yes, uh, 
And I think that even says it in Sunbeam Care Guides, if you go look up any of them, it says that too. Multiple is better. Uh, and then another thing that I wanted to uh, tell you is uh, snake hooks. <laughs> so as you see, mine is like covered in dirt because when I have to get him out of here, like for feeding or getting, giving him his shots or whatever, I dig this hook like down into the substrate like that and I drag it like perfectly along the bottom like that so that I don't risk like poking him with that end so yeah uh, and that's how I get him out because I do not recommend digging for them because uh, <laughs> they might bite you if they think you're food because that's how they naturally hunt is vibrations so they might think your food, or might feel in danger and bite you, so mine has never opened his mouth or struck at me or anything, but it's still a preventative measure, so yeah. Uh, hopefully some of this is okay and you learned a little bit and it was more in depth and less noisy. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment, like I said, I'll keep an eye out. And yeah, if you decide to get a sunbeam, I hope it is everything you dreamed it would be. I know I would never trade my sunbeam for any other snake. I love him so much. He's so curious and so cute. And their scales feel weird. They're like really smooth. And yeah, it's, it's the weirdest feeling of scales. <laughs> so anyways, I hope all of you have a great day. Goodbye.